Well, welcome, welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Lissaria, and we're gonna go ahead and jump in. In uh, today's, uh, you know, uh, video, I really want to talk about, uh, you know, the big benefits of, you know, why the rich still invest and they take really or they get uh, the tax benefits. Um, and it's because number one. Think about this for a moment. When we risk and we take calculated risk, I'm not saying to go off, you know, the cliff or you know to, you know, just jump in front of a train or any kind of scenario like that. We're talking about calculated risk that could be very beneficial for you and your entire family and for future generations. So I hear a lot on social media as I. You spend many, many hours, as I'm sure you do too. And some of those things is that is like, really, I mean, what can I do to really be able to come afloat? Because it seems like no matter how much people are trying uh, to go from paycheck to paycheck, um, they just still not succeeding to the, you know, I would say the level that they were hoping for. And the older we get, obviously, we think uh, we get a lot more concern, and I think it's 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 really a good, legitimate, you know, concern to have, right? Uh, we have less time uh, for um, compounding, you know, our interest if that's what we've done. Um, so I'll, I just wanted to share, like I've been doing the last couple of years in my channel. Um, it, it's just that there's certain steps that we need to take. We have to take it because if we don't take it, what happens is that we're going to get stuck where we're at. And I'm going to have another video um, also about the big differentials, you know, between uh, someone who's broke versus to somebody who's wealthy. And what I notice is a lot of people keep telling me, well, you know, what about if I was not made to invest with, you know, the oldest asset, right, which is real estate. Well, there's a lot of ways to invest into real estate. And yeah, I have to bring this up. That's one of the huge benefits. And I think the reason why you're watching this is because you want to learn more and more to what is that you need to do to be able to have a push or maybe just to learn a little more about financial education. Because we all come here to this world to just, I believe, to be learners. And as much as we learn, we apply. So real estate, as we know, as the recording of this, it's been um, correcting, just to say the least. And prices have definitely been coming down, um, you know, by a few, you know, percentage. I, I still, I don't have a crystal ball, obviously, but I mean, I do see what happened back in 2008. Um, and I think that a lot of the younger investors, especially in the last maybe five years or so, um, they might be have a rude awakening to what's going to happen because it just a correction is coming and it's going to, I really do believe that it's going to drop more than what it is. Now, again, I have mentioned to this many times, uh, do I see a comparable in 08 to 22, even coming into 23? Um I mean, there's a correction. And a lot of people were saying just a year ago, oh, that's not going to happen. The prices are going to keep increasing. Well, you know, look what's happening, right? Prices have dropped in some states here in the U.S. Oh, we say a minimum of about 10%. Some states even down to 20%, okay? It's like Idaho, right? And we had Nevada and uh, certain places also in Arizona. So we've seen a lot of drop um, other states, um, like the one I'm in in Florida, which is also one of the big hot markets, uh, I'm starting to see also uh, a decline. So again, I do believe that it's going to be a little, you know, uh, a percentage still coming down. Um, do I see those 40, 50 percent? Mm, I doubt it. Um, and again, I do agree with many realtors and brokers out there um, because they do see the analytics reports, um, you know, in a daily basis versus that I don't. Um, I like to look at obviously numbers. That's what I do. If you don't know who I am, my name is Liz Surya. I am a tax accountant and I do specialize, I specialize really in the niches of real estate and e-commerce. And um, just because I do think those are probably the most solid businesses right now, um, especially after what has happened, right? Uh, with um, with COVID. 
So with that said, I think what's important to know is if you don't have the means and you haven't saved up or you haven't been able to, uh, you know, uh, have enough extra cash um, to be able to uh, invest into real estate, there's many, many ways to go. And I think one of the most important thing is what is it that you like, right, within the real estate industry? And uh, I also did a separate, um, it's an online complimentary course. Um, if you're interested, you more have, you, you more than, uh, you know, uh, you feel free, in other words, to go ahead and register. Um, at least for now, I, I haven't, you know, been charging anything to it. Because again, my, my, my intention is to help people like you, uh, people who are more in the blue collar and maybe trying to cross over to you know to, to to a higher level um to have that kind of wealth but at the same time understand that while real estate is phenomenal one of the biggest perks that real estate has and this is what I want to emphasize yes because of my background is the tax benefits that you get okay that is what makes such a huge difference. Imagine you buy a property that internal revenue is telling you it's being depreciated, meaning that the value of that property is going down, which indeed the market is saying the opposite. <laughs> That's exactly what happens with real estate. In the majority of cases, we do have an average, which you probably heard, it's a minimum of three to maybe 10% per year, depending on the you know area that you live in. Uh, depending again, offering demand, right, which is a big factor. We know the inventory has been really low. Um, I do believe that a lot of people that are virtually coming across layoffs, um, other, you know, situations, right, uh, health problems, uh, divorce, uh, all these factors, they're reality in humanity, right, in, in, in our species. So the truth is that things do happen to people and there's reasons why sometimes people have to really move. So, and I think that's where the opportunity is when people are prepared and understand. So for example, when I said at the beginning of this video, what is it that you want to invest? I have people that uh, they always, um, you know, I would say a little bit obsessed with the single family home because that has been the most secure asset to own, but the problem with that asset right now, and it has been especially since 2008 when everything started hiking up, especially as of 2010 when things got improved, I noticed one thing. You're buying single family homes that are not worth what people are asking for. It's just not. And then on top of that, if you're a rehabber, which I've done that too, yes, I have, then you know that you're getting into a headache with the reality that a lot of repairs are going to be required. And let's be honest, we normally add a 10%, you know, on top of that repair cost. Mm, I've been in circumstances where I had to spend more than 25%. Um, so it can happen. Sometimes I will say that a property is like a Pandora box. <laughs> Suddenly you open it up and you think that there's only certain repairs and then there's other issues, right? So if you're more experienced than I am, I'm sure you understand very well where I'm coming from. If you're a newbie, it doesn't matter. That's why you're here to learn too. So the reality is this. If single family homes are really what I personally think they're overpriced, um, even especially even if you have to rehab them, then and you have problems with labor um, has increased by almost 20, 30% because there were such a high demand, handymans, right? Contractors, uh, roofers, plumbers, electrician, name it. Uh, they all have been overcharging also 20, 30%. So this, what I consider the cool off, I call it a cool off of the market. It's going to help many of us are uh, what I call the moms and pops investors. Obviously, uh, you know, I don't think anyone who might be listening to this, they're hedge funds. Uh, but I mean, they definitely, I think what's important is what kind of tactics can you use right now and, uh, under this circumstances and condition of the market? And I will probably think that the best thing you can do is really if you have the opportunity to be in an area which is not that hot still, even though, like I said, there's been some corrections and prices are going down. It's not enough to buy something a high end. Now we know that one of the, well, I mean, one of the main points of investing, right, is to be able. Sorry about that. Is to be able 
to really have buy a property at a low price, right? I'm sure you heard that. Buy low, sell high. Well, not always that happens, does it? Especially in a market like this, where everybody has even overbid in some of the properties, including investors. That's right, because I see quite a many, many, many investors overpaying also for properties just to get their foot inside. So I hope it works well for them. I'm a little concerned, but hopefully it will. If they have enough experience, they know how to turn it around and not spend too many months doing that repair because there's really eating their, their profits, right? So why I'm sharing all this, because I want people to be able to, in a savvy way, really invest into real estate, and understand the huge benefits. Like I said, if you don't have enough for a single family home, well, maybe you want to contemplate buying a condominium. Okay, yeah, this HOA, right, uh, where they, you're going to have to follow rules and regulations and so on, but that's a low entry for the regular, I would say, average Joe, Jane to get into the real estate, okay? So that might be a better opportunity for you. However, like I said, be very cautious what type of association you're getting into, um, and especially get to know all, if possible, the majority, especially the president, vice president of a condominium, and find out exactly who they are, what are their, um, you know, expectations as, as you being a new investor or a new homeowner. This is really, really important um, because I've seen situations where a lot of times, even small, you know, uh, pops and moms, they go in and say, oh, no, this property is going to be for me. And the problem with that is they're lying and then, you know, later on, they want to rent the property. So be very cautious about that because right now, HOAs are being very extremely, um, you know, um, demanding and they want to know the truth up front. So I think condos will be another low entry. And yeah, definitely a third one will probably be, you know, uh, you know, pretty much um, multifamilies. And when I talk about multifamily, I'm not talking about, you know, a big building. I would say maybe a two floor, see what I'm saying, where you might have up to 12 units, 15 units. Um, they're a little more accessible. Um, big hedge funds, they're not really interested in these type of uh, properties. Um, so I think that will be another good opportunity that's going to be coming up, especially for a lot of landlords that want to retire. They just, you know, they, they had their share of problems and profits and now they want to let go. So definitely I would say that uh, if, if you can and, and you think you still want to go for a single family home, good for you. Um, I think, like I said, there's better opportunities right now between condominiums and also multifamily. And again, like I said, smaller buildings, um, I think one of the things that we can save a lot in not only in tax benefits is obviously we have depreciation, right? As I mentioned earlier, we get that reduction every single year, right? Which is terrific for 20, over 27 years and a half. And then if you want to accelerate it, then you can have what they call a cost segregation, right? So in that situation, if you really had very, very high um, you know, uh, repairs, and you want to be able to reduce that income that you're going to bring with you, your rental income, then a cost aggregation will probably be a good option for you. Again, I want you to realize that even though I'm an accountant, we, and no accountant and no CPA out there does any cost sag. I mean, we are not uh, licensed engineers, so therefore we are not allowed to go on site and do this cost aggregation. What we can do is definitely refer you uh, to someone who is experienced working with, you know, investors. Um, the other thing I was thinking too is manufacturer homes. Um, they also have went up in price. Everything has across the board. Um, and that would be another opportunity. However, um, if you want to get into what they call a community park, um, I think that the same scenario, you want to get to know who are the managers, um, find out their, their you know, uh, perspective and what their restrictions are. Um, again, uh, some of these communities, HOAs, they're very strict about, you know, rentals. They want you to wait a year, two years. So, but I want you to understand that beyond all that investment, which is such a great asset, because we know that real estate is going to keep growing no matter what. The, I think the best thing I want to share with this video, the, the, the biggest take for this is that it's not only money that you put in towards, you know, a property, which is an asset, it's something that you can touch, right?
Um, it's something that you can always sell. However, it's not the liquid, right? The, the liquidity of that asset is not as easy as a stock. So for example, I can have 100 Apple stocks and I can go online tomorrow and sell them all, right? Uh, a property doesn't sell rarely in, within 24 hours. It's extremely rarely. So the liquidity is something important that you need to contemplate. So I always tell, have the money there in the cushion, but realize the huge benefits that you're getting from doing these uh, investments in real estate. And like I said, I expressed a few other, you know, assets that you can buy within the real estate. Um, and if the worst comes to worst, you can always invest without even worrying about purchasing any property. It's really through real estate investment, uh, you know, uh, trades. Um, and that is part of the stocks. If if it's not your cup of tea and you're just interested in learning a little bit about real estate. But I think the most important is that I want you to understand not only depreciation, like I said, there's cost separation, you get the 1031 exchange. Um, I think I have a separate um, video about that. I, I do go a little bit more in depth. Um, a lot of things that I think that it can be very, very helpful um, in, in to understand that this is a good way of investing. And if you really want to build that wealth and you're able to take all those tax benefits that comes with that, um, then unfortunately, well, uh, many other assets do not have. They really don't. So anyhow, I hope this has been helpful some way, somehow. Um, and, and I think, like I said, just stay positive and just make sure, like I said, every time you invest, double, triple check, um, run your numbers and always try to get the support of other people who are around you who probably a little bit better. So until the next video, um, stay in touch. And if you would like to like, share and subscribe, I appreciate it because definitely that could help very much. And, uh, and like I said, I'm going to be continuing doing a lot more videos on a weekly basis. Um, and uh, please reach out to me if you have any comments. Take care and to your success. I wish you the very best. Bye-bye.